Hi, this is a music theory lesson. Many harmonica players are happy with understanding the blues approach to the harmonica, knowing what position it is through a chart. But if you're interested in diving deeper into this, this is the video for you. When we're talking about whole steps and half steps, we're talking about the smallest measurement in Western music. Looking at the piano, if you go from one note to the next, it's considered a half a step. If you go two notes with one note in between, it's considered a whole step. So the chromatic scale, which is basically, let's say, from here to here sounds like this. But we use major scales as the primary scale that actually has seven scales within it. Now that might sound confusing to you but as we go further, you understand. The best example of a major scale and how to use the tetrachord theory is to look at the key of C. So if from C to C sharp is a half step, from C to D is a whole step, and from D to E is a whole step, and from E to F is a half step, and from F to G is a whole step, and from G to A is a whole step, and from A to B is a whole step, and then from B to C is a half step. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. If we were to choose the next scale going clockwise on the circle of fifths, we'd be adding another sharp. Now let's go through it here. From G to A is a whole step. From A to B is a whole step. From B to C is a half step. From C to D is a whole step. From D to E is a whole step. From E to F sharp is a whole step. And then from F sharp to G is a half step. Going clockwise on the circle of fifths, the next scale is D. Why do we say this? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So from D to E is a whole step. From E to F sharp is a whole step. From F sharp to G is a half step. From G to A is a whole step. From A to B is a whole step. From B to C sharp is a whole step and then from C sharp to D is a half step. Sounds like this. Sounds familiar, right? Okay, we could go through using the tetrachord theory and understanding these measurements through the whole to every scale here. Pick a note and you could use that same system. But what I want to explain next 
is the Greek modes. Now, what does that mean? Well, and why does that relate to the harmonica? Well, this relates to positions on the harmonica. So using C again, and if we were to play a chord, which is primarily one, three, five, that makes sense, right? If we played a blues progression, the first chord would be the one chord, one, two, three, four. Ah, that sounds familiar, right? The four chord would be F, and the five chord would be G. Now, those are all major chords. But they are also, when you're playing them like this, they are all within the key of C. But in Greek modes, we go up one degree at a time. And the second degree is a minor scale. The third degree is a minor scale. The fourth degree is a major scale. Fifth degree is a major scale. The sixth degree is a minor scale. And the seventh degree is what we call a diminished scale, meaning that if we were to play B major, it would be these two notes, the th third degree and the f fifth degree would be sh sharp notes. But since we're playing in the key of C, both of these notes are flatted. Now, the other thing to understand is if you are playing in modes, you play all the notes of the C scale, and there are seven of them in each mode. That's a major seventh, meaning there is only a half a step between the tonic note of C and the seventh note. Now here, there's a whole step between D and C. same thing. All playing in the key of C. That is a major seventh. Now you might have heard this. This is the dominant chord because sounds like a blues chord, right? Because from G to F is a whole step. Same thing with A minor. If we were playing A major, there would only be one note flatted here. But we're in the key of C, so. And then B minor, that pesky dominant, but dominant meaning whole step between B and the seventh note, but it's a diminished chord. So we call this a diminished seventh chord. 
and then back to the tonic, which is the major scale with the major seventh. Why did I get into all this theory? Well, number one, if you're learning how to play the chromatic, it's good to learn the major scale. But if you're playing the diatonic harmonica, you, you can use the circle of fifths to understand the positions that you can play in a particular key on the harmonica that would relate to the band you're playing with. So using the key of C, if you're playing straight harp, you're playing in the key of C. That means the key of the harmonica. Counting up C, D, E, F, G, cross harp is second position. Counting up five from there, G, A, B, C, D is third position. From there, counting up D, E, F, G, A is fourth position. Counting up from there, A, B, C, D, E is fifth position. Counting from E, E, F, G, A, B is sixth position. And counting from there, B, C, D, E, F is first flat position, as they call it. And then going from there, it gets a little more complicated. That's why we go in counterclockwise. We learn about how you add flats, and that's yet another story. Because going counterclockwise... The first scale is F, which has one flat. The second scale, major scale, is B flat, which has two flats. The third going counterclockwise is E flat, and that has three flats. Now, what you do when you're going counterclockwise is you count up four and five down, as opposed to going clockwise, where you count up five and count four down in the degrees of the scale. Thank you for sticking with me. If you've gotten this far, obviously you're very serious about understanding theory as it relates to the harmonica, whether it's the diatonic or the chromatic harmonica. It pays to understand the circle of fifths and have it memorized so you can work with bands and basically pull out of your hat what position you need to play according to the key they're playing in. But it also helps to understand for the chromatic how to play in every scale. And eventually it will help you to know how to play in all the different keys, all the different major and minor scales, augmented and diminished scales, whole tone scales, playing in different keys when it comes to jazz. This is all theory that is conventionally taught. I hope you enjoyed or, if anything, have benefited from this very serious theoretical approach to the harmonica.